What? Oh, you're expecting me to be caught off guard again, like I was with the announcements for the Year of the Raven and the Witchwood. Well, sorry to disappoint. I'm prepared this time. Blizzard teased the date of July 12th, so I'm all set. Okay, enough with the music. I already told you, I'm ready. So why are you... Huh? That image isn't referencing the expansion? It's just a reference to an event in South America? So you're saying that the expansion could come out any day now? No, 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 no! Fine! I give up! Christ! Greetings and welcome to Hearthstone Theory. Blizzard, not to play the blame game, but next time could you have your promotional images include the name of the event? Also, could you put out promotional images for your expansions earlier than the night before? I had it in my schedule to cure cancer today, but now I'm sitting here making a Hearthstone video instead. You monsters. However, don't mistake my frustration for a lack of excitement. The Boomsday Project is our next expansion, and coming with it is new cards, new mechanics, a single player puzzle lab, and probably the coolest hero skin I've ever seen, Mecha Jaraxxus. Of course, that skin is only if you purchase the Mega Bundle, so I as a free-to-play user won't get to experience that joy. But enough of the small details of the expansion, today we'll be looking at the new mechanics. Notably, mechs will be resurfacing, and with them comes the magnetic keyword. Additionally, we have project cards that will give both players a benefit when played, omega cards that trigger their battle cry only if the player has 10 mana crystals, and finally, legendary spells. Today we'll be looking at these mechanics, as well as a few other cards, and what we can expect from them as more cards are revealed. What is interesting? What is dangerous? Let's kick back, begin the show, and find out. Let's start at the beginning, mechs. Originally created in Goblins vs Gnomes, these cards were… very mundane, actually. The reason for this is fairly simple. A card with a tribe like Mech or Beast has strengths pertaining to that tribe, and that synergy can quickly spark disaster for the opponent. Take for example, Murlocs. Almost all Murlocs are overly weak in non-Murloc decks, and only become powerful when the correct synergies are in place. Blizzard didn't want their new tribe to be as offensively oriented as Murlocs, so they did something different. They made mechs simple, and built other cards that became stronger with mechs. This is similar to how beasts work in Hunter, balanced by themselves, stronger with the right synergies. This would have been a brilliant idea, if not for two problems. The first, and less significant problem, came with cards like Cogmaster's Wrench. They were just pathetic. We're not going to focus too hard on that, it's pretty self-explanatory. The second problem was with cards like Mech Warper, which became a card that was able to rapidly generate an aggressive strategy. While aggro is definitely a necessary part of the game, it's hard to justify Mech Warper, Coin, Mech Warper, Double Clockwork, Double Anoyotron. Simply put, the synergy became usable for aggressive strategies, which can unbalance the game quickly. As a result, Blizzard more or less abandoned mechs, barring a few exceptions, since at best they were doing what beasts already did, and at worst they were better than murlocs. So what's different now? Only one thing, the magnetic keyword. Minions with magnetic can, instead of being played as a minion, be attached to a mech. This makes a card like Spider Bomb, for example, operate similarly to Unidentified Elixir. Bonus stats, plus a special effect. What's this mean for mechs? Well, consider this. A magnetic card is not necessarily better attached to another mech. Many situations may call for Spider Bomb to remain separate from other minions, while others would call for the merging. This makes the magnetic keyword equivalent to a choose one effect. While merging the mechs together will often be the stronger solution, but only slightly, that choice has the caveat of needing a mech on the field, therefore remaining balanced. This is amazing. Compare and contrast with the old style of synergy, where having a mech meant certain cards were great, and not having one meant those cards sucked. With this, the cards can be designed to be slightly below average when there's no mech, and slightly above average when there is one. That synergy is much more appealing less game-swinging effects, and more strategy. Looking at our example of Spider Bomb, this card perfectly reflects that idea. While it can be strong to upgrade a mech, run it into one minion, and then randomly kill a second one, that requires a mech on the field to begin with, and for your opponent to ignore that mech, and the fact that you're a hunter playing mechs. So overall this card is decent, strong enough to be better than Voodoo Doll, but clunky enough that it often won't be. Hold on a second. We got Beast Hunter, and then Dragon Hunter, and now we have Mech Hunter? Amalgam Hunter is confirmed, guys! All hail our grotesque abomination! 
My dreams of a ridiculous hunter deck aside, we do have other effects to consider. Next up are projects, which are a simple premise. They're spells that assist both players. Effects like this are intriguing, since the player spends a card and mana to activate an effect both players will get. This generally will mean that these cards should be relatively low costed. The goal for the card is therefore to put it in a deck that gives the user of the card a much greater benefit than given to the opponent. For example, Biology Project allows druids to ramp up in the early game, which is generally better for druids with high cost minions and spells than it is for non-ramp decks. Side note, it's worth knowing that in the late game, Biology Project can replace Innervate in most cases, just saying. So this card is, again, decent if you're decent. It's worth knowing that effects that can sometimes be exploited are ones to keep a careful eye on. There's a big difference between a card like Armor Project, a card that I just made up but am certain is going to be printed, and a card like, say, Cold Light Oracle. Cold Light Oracle can be used offensively in mill decks, a trait that made Blizzard put it in the Hall of Fame. It's possible Blizzard will release a class-specific draw project, or another project that can turn the positive effect into a negative one for the opponent. Try to remain aware if such a card is released. Moving on, we have the Omega series of cards, which are simply cards with a conditional battle cry, the condition being that you have 10 mana crystals. First off, it's worth knowing that Omega cards that cost 7 or more are very unlikely to be printed. The key with these cards is that they have the potential to be played semi-balanced in the earlier turns, and then become more powerful in the later turns. A card that exists like that which costs 7, 8, or 9 mana seems very unlikely, since the odds of them being played with their bonus are much higher. An interesting way a card like that could exist is if the battle cry was actually detrimental, which means that those cards would ideally be played before 10 mana is reached. However, given the nature of Omega Defender, it seems very unlikely that Blizzard would do something like that, so expect Omega cards of 4, 5, and potentially lower cost. With that in mind, it appears Blizzard wants to create Omega cards that are balanced at their mana cost, and much stronger if 10 mana is reached. This actually frightens me for Constructed in regards to the Druid class. The Ramp Druid archetype typically has weaknesses in regards to having inflexible options, both before reaching turn 10, and even once they do so. These Omega cards can enable that deck to have a decent fallback if they draw poorly, while simultaneously allowing its players to play multiple cards once 10 mana is reached. On the other hand, Ramp decks are probably my favorites, and these cards give that type of power to all classes. I just worry that, given Druid's powerful position at the moment, their natural synergy with this mechanic, and their new Biology Project card, that they'll obtain a few too many powerful pieces. Then again, Blizzard has likely thought about this extensively, so I'm going to take it on faith that they have a plan for a balanced meta. Don't let me down, Blizzard. My fears aside, these Omega cards reward players for building slower decks, while still giving early and mid-game options to those decks. That generally tilts the game in a slower direction, encouraging mid-range to think slightly slower, and control to participate more. But at the same time, these decks still have the weakness of being rushed down, and Omega Defender without the buff is still the same as a Stegodon, which isn't bad, but it isn't good either. Building your deck wisely to better exploit this card's more powerful form can lead to greater results. So, decent stuff all around. I'd like to note that Graparian worries these cards will be strong in Arena, since reaching 10 mana is a lot easier in that mode, and hard counters are harder to come by. While he's not wrong, the new bucket system that Arena is organized around theoretically should prevent this issue, simply sorting the Omega cards in with other strong cards. It's hard to say who is right here, since Graparian is basically the god of Arena, but he's also the ultimate pessimist. Time will tell, I suppose. Now, we're actually done with the new mechanics. All that's left are the legendary cards, which are oftentimes unique, so drawing correlations is pointless. So let's examine the individual cards, starting with Dr. Boom, Mad Genius. We have no idea exactly what this card does. All we know is that it's a hero card like Hagatha, and that it is for the warrior class. Consider me intrigued. Given the artwork on the card, the special effects are likely to be mech-based, although given that it's Dr. Boom, it might also be based on raw random damage. It is Warrior, after all. If any class would appreciate damaging their own minions, it would be that one. In the end, we don't have enough information to speculate on, but I'm fairly confident that Blizzard has done its best to make this card as fun and interesting as possible. We're getting close to the end, so let's examine the Shaman Legendary minion, Electra Storm Surge. This card is as versatile as the spells that it can duplicate, which for Shaman are plentiful. The need to play this in the mid-game evens out how much power the effect gives you, 
and most of Shaman's high-cost spells do not synergize with this effect. For example, Volcano. This card guarantees a board clear, but also overloads you for 4. Similar story for Lightning Storm, Feral Spirits, and Lava Burst. That last example is an important one though. This card can provide extra burst damage, which makes the overload redundant if that secures lethal. A card like Bloodlust would likewise be very strong with this card. Earthen Might is also decent, which given this card is also an elemental, helps prop up those synergies. And of course, Shaman could easily receive new spells that could be even more powerful with this card. So overall, this card is great, if you use it with the correct pieces. Revealed later than the rest, we have another legendary card, Stargazer Luna. This card is fairly interesting, giving a card draw effect when the rightmost card is played. But of course, the card you draw becomes the rightmost card. While I applaud the idea, the majority of cases are going to have it such that you won't be able to activate this card's effect, since it's by the luck of the draw that you get a playable card. You could theoretically craft an aggro mage that uses a lot of cheap spells, which allows this card to become a powerful cycling card, but one misdraw would render its effect nullified. On the other hand, you could synergize this effect with something similar to Firefly, to add a cheap card to the rightmost spot. And you only need to activate this once for it to be worth it. So overall, it's pretty good! Finally, we have Legendary Spells. While this is technically a new concept, quests don't count, spells can do practically anything. So trying to gauge what other classes' spells will be when we only have Myra's unstable element to judge is a futile affair. However, given that legendary minions are supposed to have grand effects when they hit the field, it seems likely that legendary spells should be similarly impressive, altering the state of the entire game once they're played. That's mostly speculation though, I'm sure at least one of these spells will be rather boring. Anyways, onto the card itself. Myra's unstable element is ridiculous, playing it is guaranteed to destroy your entire deck. This has two uses, the first being a Hail Mary for when you're low on cards in your hand. This card is then a 5 mana draw 10 cards, which players of Aggro Paladin know can be a valuable tool. The second use would be synergizing this card with cards that appreciate an empty deck. Some of you might be thinking Kingsbane, but that card requires synergies, and as such will become more powerful if the deck is slowly drawn through. A better example is a card like Faldori Strider, which can use an empty deck to guarantee all of its spiders are drawn the next turn. Considering that, there is the fact that Miracle Rogue currently runs Sprint. This legendary card could feasibly substitute one of those sprints to give the benefit of these empty deck synergies, as well as being able to more cheaply fill your hands with burst damage. So overall, amazing if used right. The only challenge is making sure you use it correctly in the first place. Some of you might be wondering what this rating system I'm using is. I'll release a video next week more thoroughly explaining it. Anyways, that's it for the information we have about this expansion. Overall, it looks to be a very exciting time. The single player content is going in a new direction, mechs now have a healthier synergy structure, late game decks are getting more tools, and spells can now be catastrophic. I look forward to seeing what Blizzard has in store for us with these new concepts and ideas, and look forward to judging those ideas for you guys. We have another week and a half before more of these cards are revealed, or maybe a few more will be revealed in that meantime, I'm not sure. But when that happens, I hope to see you all here for the card reviews, next time.